Nagaland, one of the smallest states of India, has border with the states of Assam to the west, Arunachal Pradesh to the north, and Manipur to the south. It also contains India's border with Myanmar to the east. Nagaland is a largely mountainous state and Mount Saramati at an elevation of 12,552 feet above sea level is the state's highest peak and serves as the point where the Naga Hills merge with the Patkai Range in Myanmar. The state has a hilly topography exhibiting rocky terrain broken by deep gorges and steep slopes at some places. Nagaland is blessed with a salubrious climate throughout the year, and the climate of the state is a mixture of tropical and temperate, where temperature varies from 4 degrees Celsius during winter to 35 degrees Celsius during summer due to vast variation of altitude. The state is known for its rich culture, tradition, flora and fauna, and festivals including the Hornbill Festival, which is also known as the Festival of Festivals. Kishore District, where Iri and Oktasar Silk Development Scheme has been implemented, is located in the easternmost part of Nagaland State, bordering Myanmar, and the district has a total area of 1,255 square kilometers, wedged between Saramati, the highest mountain in the state, and the Jinku Mountains, Kiferi Town, the district headquarters, is located at an elevation of 896.42 meters above sea level. The climate of the district is humid and hot during summer and cold during winter, with temperature touching a low of 2.7 degrees Celsius in winter and a high of 37.0 degrees Celsius during summer. Considering the conducive climatic condition, popularity of eerie silkworm rearing among the farmers, with a lot of potential and prospects for eerie culture in the district, coupled with availability of octasar food plants in abundance, the Department of Sericulture, Government of Nagaland has implemented integrated scheme for development of eerie and octasar silk industry in Kifira district, Nagaland, with technical guidance of Central Silk Board, Government of India. Under the scheme, orientation workshop, awareness program, training on motorized reeling, spinning machines, and exposure visits were organized to create awareness and also for the benefit of beneficiaries. In addition, training come field demonstration on plantation and maintenance of castor, casseroo, tapioca, pruning, pollarding of casseroo and oak trees, including silkworm rearing, harvesting and processing of cocoons for production of yarn and fabrics, including trainings to weavers were also organized for the benefit of farmers under skill upgradation and capacity building components of the project. For sowing castor, elevated and sloppy land is ideal. Sowing castor in low-lying area should be avoided as it is sensitive to water logging. Farmers generally harvest castor fruits from trees on maturation for production of castor seeds. Castor capsules and fruits are collected, dried in sun, and seeds are collected after threshing and winnowing. Castor seeds are distributed among the farmers by officials of Department of Sericulture Kifiri or produced by farmers themselves during February, March, for sowing and raising castor plantation during March, April. For sowing castor seeds, 
Bits of 25 into 25 into 25 cm size should be prepared after cleaning jungles and removal of weeds. Before sowing, custard seeds should be soaked for 24 hours in water. One acre of land requires 2 kg of castor seeds, and seeds should be sown at the rate of 2 seeds per bit to maintain 4,000 numbers of plants per acre. Germination of castor seeds takes place in 8 to 9 days during March, April. Under Aspirational District Program Kifiri, castor seeds are sown as solo and also intercropping with maize and between existing cassiru plants to ensure additional economic return to farmers from three months onwards by rearing silkworm on castor leaves. Castor plants are generally infested by castor similupers, Akia janta, during July to September. Since the castor leaves are to be fed to silkworm, no insecticide should be sprayed on castor plants against the insect pests, but should be controlled mechanically by collecting and killing and burning different stages of insect pest. Farmers should remain alert and vigilant with frequent field visits right from the month of June against the occurrence of all the insect pests in castor field for effective adoption of mechanical control measures. Cassiru is a fast-growing primary food plant of Erie silkworm. It is generally propagated through seeds. Cassiru fruits after harvesting from trees are kept for two to three days for maturation and softening of pulp. Fruits are soaked and seeds are collected from fruits by rubbing after removing the pulp. 4 to 5 kg of fruits will produce about 1 kg of processed seed and 1 kg contains about 15,000 to 18,000 viable seeds. Castro nursery beds are prepared by raising soils by around 15 to 20 centimeters above ground and soil are mixed well with farmyard manure prior to sowing of seeds. Cassar seeds after removing the pulp should be sown immediately to well-prepared nursery beds as seed viability is only for 7 to 8 days. Cover nursery bed with dry thatch or straw. Protect seedlings from rain or hailstorm by providing shed. Seedlings should be maintained with regular watering during dry seasons, followed by weeding and crop protection measures. Well-grown and healthy cassiru seedlings of about 14 months old should be supplied to the farmers during June to August for transplantation in their field. Cassiru should be planted at 3 into 3 meters, spacing to facilitate raising of castor plants in between cassiru plants. Cassiru leaves can be harvested after 3 to 4 years of plantation based on the growth of plant for silkworm rearing. One acre of cassiru plantation yields around 8,000 kg of leaves after fully grown which will support rearing of around 650 disease-free layings per year. Well-maintained casserole plants ensures continuous supply of quality foliage for large-scale rearing of eerie silkworm. Tapioca is an important secondary food plant of eerie silkworm. As the leaves are used for eerie silkworm rearing and tuber is used for human consumption, including wide variety of industrial applications. The crop grows well in tropical and subtropical climatic conditions 
and widely cultivated in all districts of Naglin. Select flat, high and well-drained fertile lands having sandy loom or light loamy soils for tapioca plantation by avoiding water logging area. After cleaning the site and removing the weeds, prepare land for tapioca plantation by plowing or hoeing up to a depth of 20 to 25 cm. In northeastern states, tapioca cultivation is normally done during January to February and March to April. Tapioca may be raised single or along with other agricultural crops. Select disease-free tapioca cuttings from 8 to 10 months matured stems. Prepare stem cuttings of 20 to 25 cm long, having a thickness of 2 to 3 cm with 4 to 7 knots for early sprouting. Tapioca cuttings are generally planted in three methods, such as vertical, slanting or horizontal to the ground, at a spacing of 1 meter into 1 meter to accommodate 4,000 plants per acre. Cuttings are planted up to 5 cm deep in the soil for production of more numbers of tubers. Tapioca tuber is harvested during first week of December to fourth week of January. For ensuring a successful rearing, farmers are supported with construction of rearing house and rearing appliances based on scientific recommendations as envisaged in DPR of the project. Farmers use to select a suitable site for construction of rearing house, for easy transportation of construction material, and also for free circulation of air in rearing house as per the recommendation. During and after completion of construction of rearing house, technical staffs or experts inspects and supervises the construction of rearing house for effective use by the farmers. As envisaged in the project, required rearing appliances and equipment, namely rearing trays, collapsible plastic mountage, sprayers and plastic crates, etc., are supplied to the respective farmers with the help of state technical staff Gifre. Before conducting rearing, Rearing house and appliances are properly disinfected with 5% bleaching powder solution. Floor of the rearing room is disinfected one week before brushing by sprinkling bleaching powder and lime mixture at a 1 is to 9 ratio to protect from pathogens and to avoid occurrence of disease. Brush the newly hatched worms on tender and succulent castor leaves with the help of soft feathers. Newly hatched worms after brushing and separation from eggshell are provided with young, tender and succulent leaves for easy digestion and healthy growth of worms. Young age worms are generally reared on trays and avoid handling with hands to avoid contamination. Ear silkworms are reared by feeding with custard, casserole, tapioca, and payam leaves. During rearing, bed cleaning is done by farmers daily during third, fourth, and fifth stage of rearing. Farmers are also demonstrated to feed the worms with right age of leaf 
based on the age or growth of worms. Farmers are also advised to avoid feeding dry, disease and contaminated leaves during rearing to avoid disease incidence. Generally, three methods of rearing, namely tray method, bunch method, and platform method of rearing are followed. Under bunch rearing, 10 to 12 castor, casserou, or tapioca leaves are tied together in bunch and hang vertically with the help of bamboo pole or strings from feeding of worms. Cleaning of worms is easier under bunch method. Five feedings are provided per day and bed cleaning is done every day. Overcrowding is avoided during fifth stage rearing. Temperature of 26 to 28 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 80 to 85 percent is maintained for healthy growth of worms. The rearing bed and the floor needs to be maintained neat and clean to avoid contamination. Since 82% of the leaves are consumed during fifth stage, regular supply of quality leaves should be maintained. After four to five days of rearing in fifth stage, the worms are ready for maturation. The worms stop feeding, body becomes translucent and shining, and start crawling haphazardly searching for a suitable location for cocoon formation. Worms start maturation by around 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning. Before maturations, required materials such as collapsible mountage, baskets, all newspapers, chandraki, and semi-dried leaves are kept ready in advance for cocoon formation. Around 400 worms can be put in one tray of collapsible mountage. During cocoon formation, the larvae should not be disturbed and rearing house should be kept neat and clean. Cocoons are harvested from mountages only after 5-6 to six days of cocoon formation to ensure complete pupa formation if cocoons are meant for drainage purpose. After harvesting, cocoons are properly collected in plastic trays or basket. Proper assessment of seed cocoons are carried out while selecting cocoons for drainage operation. Eerie pupae are rich in protein, carbohydrates, minerals, and vitamins, which is a delicacy for the Nagas, and different recipes of Eerie pupae are prepared locally. Pre-pupae are generally removed from cocoons on the second or third day of spinning, when cocoon is still soft for eating or selling purpose. Eerie pupae are generally removed manually by hand or using cocoon opener for removal of pupae. Farmers generally sell iri pupae on weekly markets, huts or roadside along with vegetables at rupees 1 per pupa or rupees 400 to 450 per kg. After harvesting and removal of pupae, cocoons are properly dried and disposed of to Government Cocoon Bank at Dimapu at prevailing government rate as envisaged in the project.
Many of the farmers also conduct spinning of cocoons by themselves through motorized spinning machines for production of yarn as envisaged in the project. Greenwich is a site for production of quality silk worm eggs. Idle temperature of 26 to 28 degrees Celsius and relative humidity of 80 to 85 percent are properly maintained with cross ventilation of Greenwich Hall for free circulation of air. Seed cocoons having uniform shape, size, compact and weighing about 2.5 to 3 grams are selected as seed cocoons. Selected seed cocoons are spread in single layer in trays after selection based on recommended norms. After 18 to 20 days of pupation in summer, moths start emerging from cocoons. Male and female silk moths start pairing after some time of emergence. After 6 to 8 hours of pairing, female moths are separated and hung on corica for egg laying. Excess moths are kept separately in a basket for reuse if necessary. After 3 days of egg laying, female moths are collected and examined under microscope to detect pebrine disease. Only disease-free layings are selected for supply to farmers for rearing. Disease-free and healthy layings are harvested from Corica. Eggs are washed in 0.2% bleaching powder solution, followed by washing in running water and dry in shade. After proper packaging in egg boxes, Eggs are supplied to the farmers safely to ensure successful rearing of cocoon crop. Spinning is the process for producing single yarn out of this continuous filament of silk. In this method, cocoons are boiled for one hour with soap and soda solution. The soft and partially degummed cocoons are washed with hot and cold water to remove all the soap and soda contained in the fiber. The soft cocoons are then flattened in water and 25 to 50 numbers of cocoons are taken at a time to form one lump. The fibers in the lump are then dried. The dried lump are then stretched to open the fiber and fed into the motorized spinning machine to produce uniform yarn. Of late, motorized spinning machines are used, which gives higher productivity than traditional system. The operation of eerie silk waving on the looms consists of twisting, winding, and warp preparation. The spinning machine twists the yarn and the yarn for warp is prepared directly. Traditionally, airy fabrics are prepared using simple country loom and nowadays, improvised fly shuttle looms are also used in some places. Airy grabs, using extra twist in both warp and weft, are used for modern dresses like ladies' skirt, etc. Nowadays, more airy products like ladies' shawl, knitted garments like sweater, Dress materials for ladies and gents, etc., are produced in large varieties. Field technical staff and beneficiaries of the cluster area under the project were also demonstrated on pre-brushing care, application of mixture of bleaching powder and lime at 1 is to 9 ratio, 
Prior to brushing, including spraying of sodium hypochlorite solution on trees as prophylactic and crop protection measures in cocoon crop production. Training come demonstration on pre-brushing care, dusting of lime and bleaching powder mixture in rearing side and indoor rearing of freshly hatched and young worms of oak tassar with relevant crop protection measures were also demonstrated. Transfer of rearing larvae and spraying of 0.02% sodium hypochlorite solution as prophylactic measures is practiced for protection of rearing larvae. Collection and burning of disease-infested larvae as prophylactic measures are also followed to prevent further spread of disease. After rearing, cocoons were harvested by the farmers followed by sorting and selection of cocoons. After proper assessment, cocoons were dried and disposed to Government Cocoon Bank at Dimapu. Best quality, healthy and disease-free cocoons were selected and consigned for Greenwich operation for next rearing during spring crop. Under the project, about 1.10 to 2 lakhs octasar cocoons were harvested per year during 2019-20 to and 2020-21. to From the rearing conducted during 2020-2021, to a total of 10,000 best quality seed cocoons were kept for drainage operation for ensuing spring crop 2022 rearing by maintaining ambient conditions following drainage norms. As envisaged in the project, orientation workshop, training come exposure visit for on farm sector for beneficiaries, training to beneficiaries on motorized railing, spinning machines, training to weavers and exposure visit were organized under support service sector. The Department of Sericulture, Government of Nagaland Kifre, also participated in exhibition organized in the district. In view of effective utilization of oak tassar cocoons, the oak tassar beneficiaries assisted under the project were imparted training on reeling of oak tassar cocoons for production of quality yarn and also for producing diversified products of oak tassar, for creating marketing avenues and also for the benefit of farmers in future.